Hello to you. I hope that you are doing okay since the last time that we chatted. It's been a couple of weeks already since the last time that I updated you with the studio tour. Since the last time I moved things again, which means that the studio doesn't really look the same anymore, but that's something that I tend to do once or twice a year when I feel that the energy is not right anymore and I need to shift things around. I did quite a bit of knitting as well, jumping from one project to the next. I'm not sure that I will be able to show you all of the things that I completed as I have found myself doing a mix of personal knitting and design work during the last weeks of December and the beginning of the year. So my focus today is going to be on some jumpers mostly. As I wrapped up project, I felt the need to add new entries to my knitting journal. I really like to take the time to document a new design once it's complete. A design may take months and months before it's finally released, and sometimes it's just a matter of weeks. But one thing that I know for sure is that my memory is not what it once was, and I tend to forget things very easily these days. So keeping track of my work in a tangible way is a practice that has been bringing me a lot of joy lately. So that's what I will be sharing with you today, my design process through my knitting journal. The first project that I will be sharing with you today is a design that I cast on during the first French confinement last year. Was it in February or in March? I don't remember anymore. Time is not what it used to be. I remember longing for my bill of it woods for time spent outside in nature and not being able to go out as much um, probably impacted my design work unconsciously. A few years ago I released a hat pattern which I had called Bootsy. I remember spending many hours playing with this stitch pattern trying my very best to make the tree look exactly as I had envisioned it. I find it so hard to let go and start working on something completely different when I feel that the time to say goodbye hasn't come yet. So I like to explore a stitch to its full potential and let different ideas using the same stitch pattern form in my head. And that's exactly what happened with the Woodsy Socks. I knew that the chapter wasn't closed yet and that I could spend more time with this stitch pattern on my needles. These socks were challenging for me in many different ways. These are knit toe up, which was my first time using this technique. I did a short row heel and a pico bind off and all of these techniques were new to me. And on top of that, I played with a yarn that many knitters might not find suitable for sock knitting at all. Vovo is a wonderful Portuguese yarn, which is 100% wool. It's not super wash. It doesn't have any nylon in it, and yet the twist of the yarn, the density of the gauge, and the stitch pattern used made these one of my favorite design patterns to date.
The first entry to my knitting journal today is the sweater that I completed a couple of videos ago and that I've been wearing over and over ever since completing it. Offering of Trees is knit out of four strands of knitted and yarn, which is an unspun Swedish yarn. Each blend of knitted and yarn is different and unique in its own way. The fibers found from one colorway to the next is different, resulting in slight variation of gauge. Most of the fibers used to create these beautiful plates are undyed, which gives each colorway a very special and undefined earthy and heathered feel to it. For the sweater that I designed, I have used the Enlightenment colorway. I see it as a neutral beige with gold and maybe peach undertones. It's really hard to describe, but it's so pleasing to the eye. The design pattern is a very simple raglan construction jumper. It's knit top down, so there's no seaming whatsoever and pretty much no ends to weave in as the pre-yarn allows for the ends to be connected to the beginning of the new cake so easily. The specificity of the pattern is in its raglan detail. A few videos ago, I showed you some footage of me working and I think wearing the Into the Woods jumper, which has now been released into the world. The pattern will also be linked in the description box down below. This stitch pattern has been on my needles for so long now, and I think that is the stitch pattern that I spend the most time playing with ever since I started designing. There's just so many ways to play with it. So I thought that integrating this little braid in a raglan jumper would highlight the stitch pattern even more. My tech editor even thought that I had used another color for the braid portion as the elongated stitches really helped to bring up the colors in the yarn but now it's been designed in one color only. That being said, I recorded a video tutorial in which I explained how to make the braid in a different colorway, which you will find in the pattern once it will be released. The pattern is pretty much ready to be test knitted, so by the time this will be live, which should be by the end of January, the pattern should be in the process of being tested.
a few days later, I started working on a tiny little baby jumper for a dear friend who is expecting a little boy. And as you know by now, I am obsessed with unspun yarn and more specifically Nutiden. And I thought, why not using some of the leftovers from my Offering of Trees jumper and also um, the white yarn, which is called Salt, which I have used for a little hat that I knit myself during the holidays. And I'm going to try to remember inserting some footage here just to show you um, how it looks like. Um, but so I had some leftovers and I thought that I could make my friend a little baby jumper. This pattern is called Tulip. Um, this is the baby and kids version, which should be out by the time you're watching this video or should be about to be released. Um, I will insert a link in the description in the description box down below uh, for you to check it out anyways. A few videos ago, I was doing the exact same thing as I'm doing now, picking up stitches for the back of the neck. So there's an opening for the head, which makes it way more easy to pass over a little baby's head. This is my third time making a baby version and I've also made Iris a toddler version during the holidays, which is crazy to me. Comparing the jumpers and, and putting them next to one another really makes me realize how much she's grown in just a matter of months. The pattern will be available in sizes ranging from zero, zero month, newborn <laughs> to 12 years old with I think 12 different sizes if I remember correctly. This pattern is once again knit with Nutiden. Um, I've used two different colors for a marled effect and one strand of silk, silk mohair to add some strength and I guess to make it even more cozy and softer for little ones, though I think that a long sleeve um, onesie underneath is required. Um, but yeah, Iris has worn hers so much and now that she's having a toddler version, she's she's wearing it non-stop as well. So I'm even considering making her yet another one. We shall see. This version is for a little boy, so I omitted the scalloped edging. Uh, I just did a simple, I think, one by one ribbing for a more traditional look, if you will. Um, so in a way, this pattern is very versatile and can be easily adapted for both little girls and little baby boys.
I'd like to take a moment to thank our longtime partner, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. If you're a visual learner like me and or have some extra time that you would like to dedicate learning new skills and craft, Skillshare might be the place for you to start. Skillshare is an online learning community offering a myriad of different classes on topics ranging from specific watercolor skills to journaling, knitting, productivity, any topic that you might be interested in. Skillshare probably has a class on that topic for you. Today, I'd like to share some of my favorite classes from 2020. Botanical illustration, paint a colorful garden with watercolor and gouache with Sarah Bocacini Meadows, the art of creating ceramics, creating a modern mug with Ellen Levy, and make your own baby clothing, DIY sweater with Oke okay and Jeldu. If you'd like to try out Skillshare, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. And after that, a subscription is less than $10 a month. One more entry to my knitting journal. I started working on this jumper at the end of my latest studio vlog. This jumper design is fully inspired by a jumper that I thrifted last year. I just loved the fit so much that I wanted to recreate it using Beautiful Yarn by Emma from Willy Mammoth Fiber. For this design, I simply took the measurements of the jumper that I was basing it on cross chest, lengths from top of shoulder to hemline, neck opening. I took as many measurements as I thought I needed. Then I worked with my gauge and adapted the measurements to the number that my gauge gave me. I cast on and I couldn't stop working on it. 
I think that in less than two weeks, I had a new favorite jumper ready and a new design pretty much ready to be put on paper, which I have yet to do. The design is once again very simple with few little details. It is knit bottom up in the round, then front and back are worked separately to create the sleeve opening. They are then joined by a three needle bind off, stitches are picked up for the neckline and for the sleeves, then the sleeves are worked in around. My favorite detail about this jumper is the neck detailing. I wasn't original at all to be honest and I simply recreated the look of my thrifted jumper. The rolled neckline adds such a nice touch to this very minimal jumper and I've been wearing it non-stop honestly. The fit is so perfect to layer over a dress, high-waisted skirt or jeans, and the yarn. The yarn is incredible. The color that Emma managed to dye is even more beautiful in person than what you are seeing on the screen. The fibers, which are a mix of blue face Lester and Maham, give this yarn such a nice floaty feel to it. Since the jumper is quite oversized, the drape of the fabric was an important choice in terms of choosing the right yarn for this pattern. The design will be released later this spring and I'm already planning to knit a second one. Thank you. 